Content marketing is the single greatest thing that you can do for your company. As the CEO, as the founder, as the CMO, as the executive leader of your company, content marketing is the best thing that you can do. Now you can do it as your company for marginal success, or you can do it as your personal brand for incredible success. Just go to the most influential people in your industry, and my guess is they have a team of people creating content for them. Well, in this video, we're gonna dive into exactly how it works. Hey everyone, I'm John Timmerman, and I cover the world's most exciting businesses and marketing trends so that both you and I can grow our businesses faster. And today we're talking about content marketing. Now, content marketing isn't anything new, right? What is content marketing? Well, it's creating content to market yourself or your business. It can be blog posts, it can be email marketing, it can be social media content, it can be videos, any sort of piece of digital content that you can use to get your message out is content marketing. Now in the marketing world, content marketing typically refers to blog posting, but in the general sense, it's any sort of content. And the reason it works is because it organically gets people to become aware of and to engage in what you are, who you are and what you do for business, right? That's why it works. It organically does it. That means you don't have to pay. You don't have to run Google ads. You don't have to run Facebook ads. You don't have to run YouTube ads. You don't have to run TikTok ads. You don't have to buy billboards. You don't have to run TV commercials. You don't have to do these things because content marketing is value add. It's not time steal. When you run advertisements, you're stealing somebody's time to try to get them to pay attention to this thing that you put in front of their face. With content, you're adding value to their lives. They wanna read it, they wanna watch the video, they wanna subscribe to the newsletter because it's adding valuable to their life personally or professionally. That's why it works. So brands that do content marketing really well they show up in Google search results. They have an email newsletter that uh, has a lot of subscribers, right? They're adding value to their audience's life. And the best way to describe why it works, whether you're a brand or whether you're an individual, is to look at the customer journey, okay? The customer journey is simply from the point that somebody has no idea who you are, they've never seen your brand or your personal message before, getting their attention and funneling them all the way through till after they've engaged with you, after they've made a purchase from you, after they've signed up with for your service, all the way to the retention is keeping them as a engaged client or customer. That's the customer journey. Content marketing is going to facilitate somebody all the way through that customer journey to the point of retention where they are they are continuously buying from you or they are telling everybody they know about you or they are continuously consuming your service, engaging in your service. That is what a good customer journey looks like. And here's how content marketing can facilitate that. So let's start at the top of the funnel. The first thing that somebody does when engages with your corporate brand or your personal brand is awareness. The first thing they do is see. They see a piece of content, okay? That's the awareness stage. Now, what does this look like, okay? Well, this could be showing up in Google search results when they are searching for something like a landscaping company or best marketing strategy or legal help or whatever it is they're searching for, right? That's SEO, showing up in Google. Content helps you do that. Good content on your website, good content on your blog helps Google rank your valuable stuff higher, and you're more likely to be seen by your audience. Okay, so this is top of funnel content marketing. Another top of funnel strategy is YouTube. Okay, this one is underutilized still. Even though YouTube has been around for a long time, YouTube is still an underutilized content marketing platform for many people, but definitely businesses. Okay, businesses still are not investing enough time in YouTube. YouTube is the number two search engine uh, next to Google when it comes to information, and there's still not enough people putting enough content out on YouTube. So people search on YouTube for things that they need to learn about. They search for things like how to do this, how to uh, plant a garden, how to 
uh, you know, build a website, how to uh, design a picture, how to everything people YouTube. So if you're putting out videos as your company, your company could be the resource for people learning how to do things. And when they're sick of doing them on their own or they can't figure it out, your company might be the one that they go through and actually hire to do that thing. That's how it would work. Personal branding, putting out personal content as the leader of your company. If you own a landscaping company, you're the CEO of a, even a small landscaping company and you put out content on how to best care for your lawn. Again, if you have a local company, you, you're going to get the views from the local area and you could have people that come through and trust you to answer their questions about landscaping and when they don't want to do it yourself, themselves, then they go and they end up hiring your company to do it. If you're national or even better global, it's even better because you are not restricted to a geographical location, right? So YouTube is a great top of funnel awareness for when people are searching for how to do the things that they're looking to do, the, solve the problems that they're looking to solve. Another top of funnel uh, platform is social media. So TikTok is becoming one of the top search engines for the Gen Z. So they're going to TikTok and they're searching for products. They're searching for the how to do things. They're searching for things on TikTok. So TikTok is becoming a search engine and it's becoming top of funnel, meaning you can get awareness to uh, in front of the people that are searching for the thing that you offer, either from a business standpoint or again, even better because people trust people more than they trust brands. You can get awareness as the authority in your particular space. And when somebody needs something that you offer, they're more likely to contact you and then you can refer them to your company. This is something that I'm actively doing for my marketing agency is I'm actively working towards building an authority in the marketing space across all social media channels because then people will DM me and say, hey, I need help. You know, we can't get our cost to acquire customer down. We can't get our CAC down. We Our cost per click is too high. You know, we can't make our email outreach work. And when they do that, I'm going to refer them over to my sales team and hopefully cl close them as a client, right? So this is the top of funnel, some of the top of funnel ways that content marketing works. And some other kind of uh, not direct top of funnel, but equally sort of awareness building channels are newsletters. Uh, because newsletters often get shared by word of mouth. People like the newsletter and they'll share it to somebody else in their company, right? They'll forward an email. So this could be a way that you could get awareness. This is still content. You're writing newsletters either as an individual uh, in your industry or as a company. And when you write a really good newsletter, people will share it organically. They'll share it with their coworkers. They'll share it with their colleagues and industry colleagues if it's really good. So you could get awareness through newsletters as well. And finally, podcasts operate similar as newsletters, right? So people definitely go into Apple Podcasts and Google Play and they search for particular podcasts based on finance or marketing or whatever it is. So you could get awareness this way. This is still top of funnel. But people also often share podcasts with their friends just like they share newsletters. So I share podcasts that I love all the time with my team, with my co with my coworkers, with with uh, my network when I find it valuable. And so getting this word of mouth sort of digital sharing going is another great way for top of funnel content to bring people into your customer journey. Okay, so let's look at the next stage of the customer journey and how content marketing helps facilitate people down this customer journey. The next stage is the consideration stage. So once they see your YouTube video or they see somebody share their newsletter with you or they listen to a podcast, they're sort of considering like, do I want to engage further with this, this network of content, this person or this brand? And what does that look like? That looks like subscriptions. That looks like following the social media account. That looks like bookmarking the particular post or the blog post or the social media post or the podcast for future listening or future view viewing, uh, saving YouTube videos to a watch list. That's what the consideration stage looks like when we're looking at a content customer journey. When people save your videos, when they save your podcast, when they subscribe to your YouTube channels, when they subscribe to your podcast or your newsletters, this shows Google and YouTube and TikTok and all the other platforms that your content is good. People like it, okay? So this is something you definitely want. And the magical one is the share button. Not all, not all platforms have a share button, but the ones that do, 
uh, and this is where Facebook really grew. This is why Facebook was sort of the early king of social media is it's a share first platform. They wanted you to share posts with other people on the platform. And when people would share your post, that's let Facebook know this is a good piece of content and then it would organically show it to more people, okay? Same thing goes for the, a lot of the other platforms as well. So you want to get subscriptions and follows and bookmarks and shares. Uh, this is the ultimate kind of positive metric in consideration that shows people are really considering you to be an authority and they want to see more. Okay, the next level of the customer journey is the sale. Now, I will say, disclaimer, I'm only using four stages to the customer journey here for simplification purposes, and it's easier to understand. And in our experience, this is sort of all we really use to map the customer journey. But there's a lot of companies out there that use seven stages or 10 stages of the customer journey, all right? But for simplification, you wanna get the awareness, you wanna get them to consider it by signing up for more of the thing, and then you want to engage them into actually getting funneled into some sort of call to action, a sale or a lead or something, right? So that should be your next goal. If you put too many other goals in there, you have more chances of losing that person. And it's also over complication of the entire process. So we're going to focus on the next stage being the sale slash result. Because if you're not selling a particular product, the result might be to get a request for a proposal if you're a service-based com company. Um, it could be to getting them to become a subscriber if you're a media company, right? So business result is the next stage. And how does content do this? Well, this is quite simply, if you offer really great, valuable content, you've already basically crossed the finish line. The next stage, the business result stage, purely relies on having that person have the deep need for what you offer, okay? So we get the question all the time or the concern all the time. Listen, if I put out all my best stuff and content, why would they wanna hire me? The simple answer is convenience, all right? People, certain people may try to do what you're telling them to do on their own, but we're all busy. We all have our own jobs. We all have our own families. We all have our own hobbies. We all have our own stuff we pack our days with. So to expect somebody to dive in and be as good at what you do as you are based on some YouTube videos or some blog posts where you tell them how to do it, it's not going to happen. So the next stage relies on having that person who is considering you as an authority have the need to build a website, have the need to get a contract written by a lawyer, have the need to getting their lawn mowed, have the need to buying a coffee cup, whatever it is, right? So the next stage relies on being there when they need what you offer. And in some cases, less cases, convincing them that they need what you offer, okay? Uh, that is what that sale or that business result stage of the customer journey relies on. And this is where, I'll use the example of Gary Vaynerchuk's book, Jab, 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 Right Hook. Uh, great book or great concept, which is give all the value in your content and then at the end of your content or every 10th piece of content or in the bio in your social uh, uh, network or in the description on your about page on your website, whatever it is, that's where you have the call to action. That is where you say, hey, and if you need help treating and caring for your lawn, contact my company at this phone number or this email address. Okay. You've earned the right to sell what you, what you offer. All right. So that's where that sort of final sale or business result stage should end is peppering in that call to action after you've added a ton of value in the awareness stage and the consideration stage using your content. Okay. And the final stage is retention. So after they've made a purchase or signed up as a subscriber or requested a proposal and signed a working contract with you, now retention is facilitated in large part by content. This could be regular customer emails that go out, adding more value to the service that they signed up for, uh, emails, adding more value to the products that they bought social media content because now they're a customer and a subscriber that they can share with their friends because they love your product or your service. So content marketing goes into retention as well. Maybe they are a podcast subscriber. They have your product. They love your product. 
and they subscribe to your podcast because you constantly give them life or business tips that are really valuable to them. Not only is it going to keep you top of mind as a leader uh, or as an authority figure, it could, if you're doing this as a company, it's keeping your brand top of mind. And when they have the need to rebuy or sign up again, you're showing them consistently that you are the right choice for them. And if they have somebody else who asks them, hey, do you know a marketing agency? Yep, I know one, Good Monster. They do a great job. Hey, do you know a, a lawn mowing company? Yep, uh, XYZ Lawn Mowing. They do a great job. I'm a customer of them. They're going to recommend you to anybody that asks them for a referral, that just brings it up in com conversation, right? So keeping top of mind is a strong customer or client retention strategy to make sure that that cycle, that customer journey cycle never ends. Awareness when they're looking for what it is you offer or answers to the industry that you're in, consideration because you're creating great content that adds value to their life, business result or sale or client acquisition when they have the need for what it is you offer, and then retention when they have a repeat need for what you offer or they have somebody in their network that needs what you offer and it goes back to the top, right? the top of the customer journey. Then that new person looks at you, they become aware, they consider, they make the purchase, and then retention. So on and so forth. So that's how content marketing works. And going back to the beginning of this video, I highly urge you as an individual to put out your own content because uh, I heard this once and I totally agree with it. Becoming an internet celebrity is by far the most lucrative business opportunity that you can have in today's digital age. If you look at all the fast growing, most successful, most uh, kind of out there and the ones that are getting the most opportunities thrown at them, it's the internet celebrities, it's the influencers, it's the business owners and leaders in particular industries that put out tons of content. Why? It's because they're always top of mind. You might get somebody saying, oh man, I can't, I can't stop seeing John Timmerman in my feed all the time. Like, you know, what is this guy putting out so many videos for? But when somebody needs a marketing agency, who do you think they go to? They go to somebody who's top of mind. Same thing in the legal field, same thing in the medical field, same thing in the finance field, same thing in the agricultural field. Every industry has influencers that when somebody has a need, they go to this person because they have the authority. And that is what content marketing does for you as an individual. It works for businesses also. We do it every day for clients of ours but it works better for individuals because people trust people more than they trust brands. If you found this content valuable, please subscribe to the YouTube channel uh, or my podcast. Uh, you can head, out, head over to my website, jtimmerman.com. I put out blog posts on a lot of marketing and sales and business development advice. That's where I give you tons of free value. And the call to action, the little, little hook that I'm putting in this uh, uh, hopefully I've earned it, is that if you need help with marketing, particularly performance marketing, if you need direct response, sales, and leads, contact my agency, thegoodmonster.com. Be happy to see if we're a good fit for you. Till next time, have an amazing day.